Hello and welcome, I'm Marumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's try out The Last Federation. This game just came out very recently and it's rapidly being developed. We're already on patch version 1.015. In the last, like, three days they've patched the game three or four times. Pretty impressive. One, one of them actually broke the game, but um, they hotfixed it very quickly thereafter. So, I have not had a chance yet to win this game, but I really like it. And we're going to dive in and uh, give it a go. I'm going to basically treat this like a tutorial series. I'm going to take my time, read the prompts. We're going to take our time and make sure that everything makes sense as we go along. So I'm by no means an expert, so don't come to me looking for like, this is how you win this game, but let's have some fun with it. So we'll do a quick start. We're going to play on normal difficulty. We'll put combat difficulty up to hard, just so it's a little bit more challenging. And we'll dive right in. Okay, so I am the last of the murdered race of Hydrals. My countrymen were the dictators of the solar system, so we kind of had it coming. Yes, that is me above, and you are me. This is our story. Apparently we're a, uh, a Hydral. It's a Hydra, essentially. I was the sole survivor thanks to a renegade mission I undertook, betraying my race to bring spacefaring technology to our potential rivals. My ultimate goal, the creation of a peaceful, unified federation of planets. Only then can we be safe from the kinds of atrocities my race committed, and the kinds that were committed against us. Naturally, upon my crash landing at this planet, I was placed in captivity. Having no concept of my strength, they did not realize that I was merely waiting. I waited for years. Stardate, first one, Proto 3000. My dream of a universal federation is as alive as ever. And now the Acutians have finally given themselves into orbit. Finally gotten, excuse me. After spending so much time with me as a peaceful captive, they were ill-prepared for my escape. I have com commandeered the first prototype executor, and now the Acutians are in hot pursuit. The Acutians are still in the process of ramping up their space industry, so that gives me a short window of opportunity. But soon, their mechanical CEOs will be looking to make planetary acquisitions. These dangerous, amoral robots destroyed the last remnants of my race after the Evux almost wiped us out. Having them as my enemy was a given, I think. So they're referring to the Acutians being our enemy here. Here they come. I outclass this force so severely that it will be almost impossible to lose, so now is a good time to put my ship's ship through its paces. But I still have to be careful if they manage to take out my ship. I am just as dead now as later. So, uh, again, we're going to be playing and uh, doing the kind of doing the tutorial. I just, I mean, if you've never played this game before, it uh, it does take an hour or two to like learn everything that's going on. Maybe, maybe less than that. Maybe a half hour. All right, so it's always your lonely flagship plus whatever NPC allies you can muster versus an indeterminate number of foes. Combat is turn-based with everyone moving and acting at the same time after you give your ship its orders. So unlike a game like, say, Civ V, where you, you play in sequential turns, it's this is instantaneous. So everyone kind of plans out their moves, and then you see what happens. So uh, I can't think off the top of my head of other games that are like that. There's some shooter games that are like that. Your first order of business is to give your ship a movement order. To figure out where the enemy is, you'll want to use the mini-map, upper right-hand corner, pan your view around using the WASD or arrow keys, and zoom in and out, as does Northern Line all the time. we got to zoom in, zoom out, a lot. Mouse wheel or page up, page down. All right, so we'll try that out. We'll zoom in, we'll zoom out. It's very nice. I do like making this thing um, as large as possible. It's got three possible settings. I like it being big. So we can see here um, where that little green dot there, and there's stuff up here. We've got a space station. It's a survey. you got to read right down here. Survey platform. It's owned by the Acutians, who are an enemy. It's invincible. Docking with this is a way to make amends for stealing their first flagship. You'll give them eight techs. Really? That's a lot. And gain 60 influence in return. Worth it? Hard to say. It makes them much more friendly to you, but also makes them much more dangerous. And then these are their ships. So they've got a uh, an AOC Sisyphus. <laughs> really? It's a type Velocitor. They've also got an AOC Beaufort and an AOC Mosquito. So, yeah, alright. So... As far as how movement works, basically you've got this thing. It's you know it's kind of showing me how far we can move, and they're going to enable some more features as we play. But I'm probably just going to blow them up. I think that's pretty reasonable. So let's just go towards them. Now it's time to attack. I promise I won't bug you constantly. Yes, you will. But in this first battle, there are a few things to point out. Look at the bottom of your screen. You have some new options. First of all, there are three different weapon choices down there, and there are multiple attack modes too: hold fire, auto fire, select targets, etc. Choosing the right weapon in the best attack mode is a big part of winning battles. 
Hover over enemy ships to see what weapons have the highest DPS damage per second against them. This battle is dead simple, but future ones will not be. So use this time to get comfortable dominating these little foes. Important, you are currently in auto fire. Unless you change this, then your ship will always pick its own targets to fire. Best ones based on your selected weapon, regardless of where you click. Clicking just confirms your orders. If you want to attack a specific ship, you'll need to switch to select targets mode. So, I do like select targets mode because I like to focus fire ships down. It's kind of like StarCraft or something, you know, where if you focus your DPS on one target and kill it, then overall you'll take less damage because you've killed some of the enemy. Would you rather have two enemies that are at half strength, both firing at full power, or do you want to have one enemy at full strength firing? Obviously the one enemy is going to do less damage. So, so we're going to switch from auto fire to fire at selected ships. We're going to click on this one. Oh shoot, I forgot to change my weapon there. <laughs> so, I know how to play this game, I swear. Alright, so we're going to go this way. We've got to change our weapon over here now as well. So we've got three weapons. The minigun, which is rapid fire bullets that make short work of most small craft, but won't make a dent in larger armored ships. We've got the energy blaster, which is a high range energy weapon that does 4x damage to the shields of any enemy ships, but very little damage to the hulls of most large ships. Many large structures and turrets take 3x normal damage from energy attacks, however. And we have the gravity lance, gravity weapon that does fires lance-like beam that damages enemy ships or any ships or debris in its path, including carving through most large ships. Not too effective against midsize and only 25% effective against shields. So if you haven't figured this out yet, you've got the remove their shields, destroy their ship, and the destroy small fighter craft weapons. That's what we start off with. So we want to switch to the energy blaster, which also has a larger range. You can see the attack ranges when you hover over it. So we're going to switch to the energy blaster, we're going to target that ship, and then we click again. There we go. So it tells us there we just did 16,800 shield damage. Not a particularly large amount, actually. Now we're going to use the shift key to cue and kind of direct our path. And once again, we're going to keep shooting at that ship. I don't want to worry about all these bullets. And it's interesting, if you zoom in, you can actually hover over every single bullet and see how much power they have. Interceptor bullet shot! Power 2548. We've got some interceptors, which are tiny little ships. The minigun would be very good at killing things like this, but again, we're going to focus on the actual primary ship and try to outrun these bullets. That time we did 252,000 damage. So we will continue to arc away from these guys, and this guy is now down to 214817 out of 483,000 shields. So we'll continue using the energy blaster to take those shields down. You see up here how much hull strength and shield strength we have, and in a moment, probably within the next turn or two, we're going to get the ability to control whether we're being offensive, defensive, or maneuverable. So he's taken another 168 shield damage, down to 47,000. We could do one more round of shields, and that might be okay. Let's see, how much... if we were to arc this way... How much damage do these do? Okay, so Energy Blaster does 84,000, Minigun does 43,000, so half damage with the Minigun. But it would do more once it pierces the shields. I think we'll do more damage overall with the Minigun this time. So let's go ahead and use that. And why don't we actually switch up to Auto Fire and see if we can maybe take out some of these Interceptors as we shoot. So, let's um, fire selected ships and we will select some of these little guys as well. You don't have to do this. Check out the top of your screen. Objectives. So most battles have a single objective, but that objective may involve multiple parts. This particular battle has two objectives, either of which you can choose. If you choose to destroy the enemy flagships, you'll gain some credit, which is currency. You can identify flagships by the fact that they are quite large, and usually there is at least one chasing you. <laughs> I love the sense of humor in this game. It's great. However, I'm oh, sorry, hover over them to be sure if you like. Alternatively, if you choose to instead dock with the science lab, then you can end the combat peacefully. You'll give them some text that will make them stronger, and they will like you a lot better. That part definitely sounds good. To dock with the lab, just fly over to it and wait. Your tractor beam will lock on and take care of the rest. Alright, so... Yeah, we're gonna kill some. Enemy's shields are down! Up until now, you've been attacking the enemy's shields, so the best weapon for the job was the one that does particular damage against shields, or which has generally the highest DP, overall DPS. But now that the shields are down, and you're going to be hitting the hull, the ideal weapon to use against the ship probably just changed. Indeed. 
So he took out a few interceptors, and yes, Armored Hull resists ballistics. So just get a little warning here, letting us know that this guy, his shields are down. He has 73,961 hull strength out of 77,000. So we definitely want to switch up to the Grav Beam. Oh, and I'm going to actually press the Escape button. I want to curve, and I want to keep moving on a path. We'll switch up to the Gravity Beam. Gravity Lance. Zap! Get him! Did 40,000 damage there. And once again, I need to hold the shift key so we can queue it. Oh, is it not? It's not letting me do exactly how I want. There we go. And we can just click, click, and zap, zap, get it! Boom! There goes one. Okay, so we've taken down one of the three flagships. There's lots of bullets coming our way. You can see this is kind of like, um, oh, what's the term for it with um, shooter games? Bullet something? Bullet frenzy? Bullet, um... There's a term for it. You know what I'm talking about, right? Bullet madness. Okay, so we've got these little interceptors we're going to deal with. Probably going to be a good idea to route around and go for these. These aren't even the big ones. We need to look for the big ships. Got one up here. And it looks like we've got one down here as well. This one's not very strong, though. So why don't we continue to arc around these little interceptors. Oh, actually, those are energy bolts. We're going to go this way, we're going to switch up to the minigun, and we're going to go to auto fire and just let it shoot at whatever it can get its hands on while we try to get down to that guy. And if you really try hard, you can actually like navigate past these bullets. What is that? It's a disruptor enemy shot. Nice. Okay, so we've got an interceptor, and we've got a... just a regular ship. Hmm. This is the gravity lance is the most damage to this thing. Does it not have any shields? Oh, it doesn't. Yeah, gravity lance it is. And we'll switch up to... Fire at selected ships, and we'll target that ship. Flagship power management unlocked. I swear this is the last time I'll interrupt you during this battle. But now that you're getting a few turns in, there's one more bit you probably ought to know. It's time I give you direct control over power distribution in your three subsystems. Increasing power to your weapons gives you higher damage output as well as longer range. Increasing power to your shields gives you faster shield regen and makes your shields more resistance to the shots that do hit them. Increasing power to your engines gives you faster movement, better turning arcs, and a further distance that you can move per turn. To set up your power levels, just click on the various bars or use the hotkeys, which are ZX and C. Uh, there are instructions in the tooltips, however, during each turn of your ship, it will automatically change power based on context. Let's suppose you don't issue a movement order. Well, it diverts engine power to weapons or shields instead. If you're not attacking, it will divert to shields, etc. So you don't have to min-max it and constantly micro it, but I probably will because I like to. So, if you were to issue like a hold fast command, it will automatically do stuff for you. Automatic management doesn't make manual management pointless. Consider I'm low on health, so I'm going to crank up shields for a while at the expense of, or I need to be able to maneuver very carefully here, so I'm willing to sacrifice shields or whatever. I am so OP here, so let's get this over quick. Nothing to shields, alt weapons, let's go. And so on, these sort of larger decisions are the point of the power system, not moment to moment fiddling. What about that? Better turning arcs with a different power engines. Well, see for yourself. <laughs> so, and then the next one's kind of funny. How the heck did you do that curly Q? <laughs> waypoints. Simply hold down the shift key while issuing movement orders. You lose a little speed for each curve waypoint, so your total distance goes down a bit for your information. Are you feeling a bit overwhelmed? Sorry about that, but do not you don't worry. You have to, don't have to memorize it. You can review it at any time. All right, fantastic. Shoot. So we took 9,833 shield damage, however we have a total of 152,000 shields remaining. Not too concerned about it really. And again, ZXC control these, they are modifiable in your settings menu. You can go to view and edit controls and then change it here. But um, yeah, we're going to continue to focus fire on this ship, I think. And I'm going to actually depower the shields quite a bit, or actually the other way around. It's uh, shift, shift X to reduce it. We're going to go with lots of power to the maneuverability, and uh, weapons is fine. And I want to 
Eh, let's go full full maneuver here. I want to get this way. Not worried about shields, because again, we have lots of shields available right now. So we'll stay on the gravity beam, stay on fire at selective ships. Let's see if we can kill that guy. Now he did automatically shoot at anything he could reach because he couldn't reach his target ship. And let's just blast our way over here and uh, maybe we'll use this one instead so we get a few more shots. <laughs> Look at that firing arc. It's crazy. Alright, now we're going to change back up. I want to go to um, lots of firepower. Very low maneuverability. And again, a lot of this stuff you can kind of do on your own. So we'll just kind of go like that. And we use the gravity beam. And this thing should just get... Oh! Got obliterated by our previous rounds. We're the firing. That's fine. Okay, one remaining flagship. It is... Here. I do think that this one should be a little bit easier for us to read. And these things here must be what? These are just interceptors. Alright. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead and once again turn down weapons, get lots of maneuverability. Go like so. And we'll go on this thing, see if we can blast some stuff as we go. And auto fire. Taking out those little guys. Trying to get closer to this. It's not that ship, actually. It's this one we need to get to. Let's go like that. Long and involved combat. Much harder on hard mode. The last time I did this was on normal mode. It was a lot easier. Surprisingly, right? Lots of firepower. Shields are at full anyway, so I think we just keep them down. You can actually hover over it and see exactly the effect. Current recharge rate multiplier 0.5. Multiples incoming damage to shields by 1.2. So by having our shields so low, we're taking 20% more damage to the shields. But I don't care. I just don't care. Let's use the zip zip. Laser beams on that guy. Did 150 some thousand damage. Not bad. 242. Shields done 89,000 now. Um, we are taking some damage to shields. Let's um, tune back the weapon just a little bit because I think we're going to pierce those shields anyway. And we don't have to worry about killing all the interceptors. We just have to kill this thing. And now we're going to go for the kill, so let's just power up the weapon. Charge right straight at him. Go with the grav beam. Get him. Oh, he's out of range! Darn. Okay, um... What if we... We need full power of the weapons and some maneuverability, if possible. There we go, now we're getting hits in. Our shields are down, that's fun. Doesn't matter, as long as you don't die. Bam! We win! End combat. Contract complete, first battle escaping with a new flagship. The Acutians lost zero squadrons, one flotillas, one armada. Turns taken 23. You took a total of 270,000 shield damage and 7,000 hull damage. Everything is repaired between combats, so it's not a big deal. Uh, 75 hostile ships participated. We destroyed 32. We gained credit, 1,200 by destroying enemy ships. We lost two influence with the Acutians. We'll talk about that more soon. We're now at negative 102 relationship or influence with them. And this took 11 seconds of real time. <laughs> nice. Okay, sweet mother of space sheep. It's the solar map. I'm going to introduce you to this gradually for now. A lot of stuff is hidden. Don't worry about trying to create the Federation just yet. We'll get to that later. It's not even an option yet. Right now, you need to worry about gaining credit to spend, and you also need to accumulate a goodly amount of influence with a few races. A humble suggestion is that you start by delivering spacefaring tech to the Skylaxians and ors and or Peltians and then run some dispatch missions for them to gain more credit. Your current focus should be on making yourself more powerful and influential, and as you complete missions and pol political deals, I'll open up more and more ways for you to do that, culminating in the options for trying to form a fledgling federation. If you want to read this or any other message, just click your logbook. Okay, so I'm going to take a break here, but that is the beginning of our... Uh, last federation campaign so if you like the video please do click the like button it does help out quite a bit with youtube search results helps people to find the channel and it also makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside so that's nice 
And uh, do make sure to comment if, if you'd like to as well, and check out the next video. So I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks for watching. See you in a bit.